looking now at the kink demand curve and I've already drawn my axes to be uh, quick about this. So with the kink demand curve, above a certain price you can have a relatively elastic demand and then below a certain price you can have relatively inelastic demand. So this being demand or average revenue. Okay. And where you get that kink, it's good to draw a line downwards. Okay, now this kink is going to mean that you're going to get a discontinuation with your marginal revenue. So it's going to do something a little bit like that. Okay, so you get this discontinuation here between this point and this point. And what you can actually do is, whoops, that was highlighting. Not whipped out where my rubber is. You can actually rub out these parts um, here. Um, or not so much. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's put um, our marginal costs on. Sometimes people put average costs on, but it's not so standard in textbooks. So you can do as many marginal costs as you want. Sometimes, oh, using my uh, highlighter there. Sometimes... Um, textbooks draw two or just one um, but um, I'm gonna draw two and I think it's quite useful actually because it can show something in particular so we know where that dotted line goes down basically is going to be the quantity the ma profit maximizing quantity where marginal cost is hit marginal revenue and then when we go up and hit that point there that's gonna be the price because we don't have um, average costs on here we can't show the super normal profit so don't worry about that too much but the reason that you can draw two marginal costs on there is because actually marginal costs can decrease from that marginal cost one or increase from that marginal cost two and it's not going to change that profit maximizing output point um, so that's that's quite significant that usually on diagrams if your marginal cost change it is actually going to change the point of profit maximizing so that might that can be used as one explanation why um, prices can be sticky or rigid and the other reason why is because of the shape of your demand curve so at this point demand is quite elastic below that point demand is quite inelastic we know that if you increase the price when you've got elastic demand you'll actually reduce your total revenue because people are consumers that is are sensitive to price changes and if you decrease the price when demand is inelastic you know that um, total revenue will actually decrease because consumers are relatively insensitive to price changes at that point um, so knowing that taking that into consideration we know that if the firm increase the price other firms you know know that that only serves to reduce your revenue so they're not going to follow suit and increase their prices either and if you reduce prices um, it's going to reduce your revenue so you might find the other firms don't do it because they think what's this firm doing they're being a little bit silly here but if they do have a product that's quite similar to others in the market remember this is a market where there are a few large producers um, but depending on how similar the product is they might follow suit as well um, and that would enter the firm, all of the firms really into a price war so that's um, I think of uh, the supermarkets at the moment with all their price matching and all that type of stuff I bet they wish they hadn't started that really um, because it's um, decreased probably their, their revenue and increased their costs somewhat because they're having to advertise on TV you know we were this much cheaper than other supermarkets and all that kind of stuff um, but really all it's doing is a kind of race to the bottom and reducing revenue for firms. Good for consumers, I suppose. Um, not so great for those firms in the short run, at least.